guys just in here cleveland street novelties oh my gosh check it out another super special doll livery day and i'm so excited to share it with you guys so you don't want to wait um sit back relax grab some snacks grab a cocktail and get ready for a good time it's just jen it's a just jen show just jen here's some things you should know she likes things that are creepy things that are dead she likes to sing songs that get stuck in your head it's just jen it's the Just Jen Show. Oh my goodness, you guys. I'm so excited for today. Welcome on back for another fabulous doll livery day. Check it out. Mesco has done it again. Delivered us a mega figure. This one comes with sound and it makes me so happy. I know some of you are wondering, Jen, what's on the box? Well, I got the box and sadly there was a little mix up. At the, at the warehouse there, and there was a sticker right over top. And I didn't want to have to wait to share the doll with you. So pretend this big blemish just isn't here. And peek inside and see the glory of the little Jason figure that lurks beneath. I'm so excited, you guys. Other than this big giant blemish, I really love the box. I love the way that it's all jagged, like he's just tearing his way through, machete in hand, wielding nothing but um, malevolence and chaos, which we all love so very much. The classic Friday the 13th font down here. The box on the side shows a lovely close-up of the fabulous man. And then dun, 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 dun. on the back, you see him in his full glory. And there's even a little hole here for everyone else who's keeping him inside the box. I imagine you don't have a big sticker on your box because it might look a little weird on your shelf. But you can press the sound activated button on the back of him through the box so you don't have to open him up. I want to open him up, so <laughs> get ready. We're going to tear into this little guy. Now, you guys all know Friday the 13th um, was. Um, released in 1980. It is one of my favorites for many, many reasons. It's one of like the first horror movies that I really remember seeing when I was younger, like trying to stay up late with my sister and watch horror movies. This is one of the original ones that I remember and absolutely love. Another special reason is the very first horror convention that um, I had ever like vended at and gone to was um, it was called Scarefest. They still do it. It's absolutely fabulous. It's in Lexington, Kentucky, and it was like September of 2008, and they were having like a Friday the 13th reunion, which was super cool. So Victor Miller was there, and Victor Miller was the guy who wrote and kind of came up with the concept of uh, the Friday the 13th and Jason and the campers and all that great stuff. Harry Manfredini, the man who was the composer who came up with the great soundtrack, <laughs> which is what this sound is inspired by. I can't wait to share it with you guys. But the great kill, kill, kill. Like, like Killer Mommy, remember at the end? Because we all know the original killer from the first Friday the 13th. Well, I hope you guys all know. If not, big spoiler alert. It's actually the mom. It's Pamela Voorhees. And she's hearing Jason's voice. And she's saying, kill her. Kill him, Mommy. Kill him. To avenge poor Jason's death. Now, this clearly... It's not the Jason from the first one, because that would be Pamela, or it would be Ari Lehman, who was the uh, the first Jason. Um, but back to my original story. At that first convention was where I met my fabulous husband, Joshua Hoffman. I hope you guys all know and have checked out his website. And um, so Friday the 13th became even closer to me because we got to hang out with... Um, Victor Miller, and we got to hang out with Harry Manfredini, and we got to hang out with Tom Savini, who had done the special effects, great special effects guru that everybody should know out there. Um, so Friday the 13th became cemented in my heart, even that much more from my childhood, now into my adult life, and uh, bringing basically my husband and I together. So yay, thanks Friday the 13th, horror rules. <laughs> You know what else rules this freaking doll? So like I said, first one, we've got Pamela. In the second um, Friday the 13th, he doesn't have the mask yet. He's like sackhead Jason. Like He's got like the bag over his head. He knows that he's not really a pretty guy, so he's trying to hide his face a little bit. I mean, I don't know what's more, uh, what's more alarming, the mongoloid sort of face of his or the bag over his head. Not quite sure. But this guy, ba-da, represents... 
the third Friday the 13th when he actually gets the hockey mask before he gets um, chopped in the head at the end of that one. And I just want to take a moment to look at the fine detailing on this fabulous mask. It makes me so happy. All the slash marks in it. I mean, it's it's seen some days. It's been at some hockey games, getting some hits to the face. He's running through forests, getting uh, wax all over it. And I just think it looks absolutely fantabulous. The great detailing um, on uh, the little, I don't know what they would be, buttons or metal pieces over here, the little brackets, the leather straps to hold it on top of his head. And when you get really close, you can see those wonderfully wicked eyes. And they're not quite straight in the movie. They're kind of like offset because again, he's, he's a little messed up. Poor Jason wasn't born a little pretty boy, drowns in the water, you know, and everything's not quite lined up like it should be, but we still love him to pieces. And they got that great detailing behind this mask. Again, beautiful green eyes. We knew we were, we were related somehow. And then we're going to go around to the misshapen head. Part of me Okay, all of me <laughs> really wishes that the mask would come off and we could see underneath, but I know that's not possible with everything. But you should see, like over here, we've got nice normal ear. On this side though, clearly gnarly, maybe nibbled on by some, some fishies down in there, not quite sure what's going on. But all the misshapenness over here on the right side is just so prevalent and so obvious, even underneath the mask. I love the fact that he's got the great jacket, little snaps. You know I love playing with my dollies. So you can slide the jacket off if you want. Check it out, the little, uh, they call them wife beaters underneath. I'm not sure if it's the PC term for it or not, but it's the wife beater. That's what he wearing. He beating everybody. He's not, he's not uh, discriminating. I also love that it has cute little pockets, great little detailing, actual little pocket there. One over here has got a little button on it. We're going to snap you back up. We don't want you getting chilly. Awesome. Look at this hand. Ready? <laughs> Ready to grab the accessory. But wait, let's talk more about this fabulous outfit that he's got on. Love the pants. Oh, look. On the back, you can see that it's almost like a little jumper. He's wearing a little romper here. The, um, the shirt and the pants are connected. They do come off. There's a little Velcro there. And then, of course, what would Jason be without his Big clod hopper work boots. Let's see if I can pull the pants up a little bit so we can see them a little bit better. Bam! Those are some serious S kicking boots right there. I love them so much. And of course, what is Jason without his mother? What are we all without our moms? <laughs> and I'm gonna pull his pants back down. I want to make him look presentable. And ah, that's a big A machete, you guys. I love it so much. We're just gonna slip it. Bam! Right into his hands. <laughs> look at this. All these fabulous points of articulation. It's like 15 inches of awesomeness. And then my favorite part on the back. Let's see if we open it up. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna do that's the try me mode. There's an off mode and then an on mode. So we're gonna try the on one. Let's see. <laughs> oh my gosh, this makes me so happy, you guys. At first, when I was like with sound, even my husband was like, what does Jason say? What are they gonna do? And then we kind of mocked, maybe they'd give him a nice British accent, but no! It's that fabulous sound effect that Harry Manfredini came up with. Oh my goodness, you guys, Mesco, this is amazing. If you guys haven't gotten yours yet, make sure you get online to Cleveland Street, um, clevelandstreetnovelties.com. Of course, I forget it right now. Um, get online, get your doll, because whether you're collecting living dead dolls, whether you love horror movies, whether you just like dolls in general, whether you just like horror in general, this guy is a must have in your collection. I know he's gonna go in mine and he's gonna look so cute with all my other little dollies. Oh my goodness, you guys. Ah, this is like the best, I'm so excited. Make sure you guys are subscribing. There are so many more dolls coming out. Um, I just got a notification that they're getting ready for the Freddy Krueger Living Dead Dolls with more sound. 
Oh my gosh, I can't wait. We still got the blind boxes, an entire series with blind um, mystery dolls in it. There are so many good things coming. So make sure you subscribe because you want to be the first to know all the cool things that we've got in store for you. Make sure you guys comment below too. Tell me what you like and tell me what you didn't like. Tell me what you guys are hoping to see next. Is there a doll coming out by either Living Dead Dolls or Mesco in general that you have been dying to see? I want to know. And as always, you guys, Thanks so much. You make me just a little less creepy, which is pretty nice. <laughs> I'll see you guys real soon. Bye. Bye. Hi, guys. Do you like living dead dolls, mystery minis, horror movies, long walks in the cemetery? Me too. Make sure you subscribe.